Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Movie Thoughts. Swedish original. So... The ending is perhaps a little bit... of a positive, you know, com compared to the rest of the film. It feels maybe slightly off. I personally thought that, you know, I really got into the mystery and thought it was very well crafted. But I did also think that the... the red herring of, oh, well, that person has died, was used a bit too often, you know, you have Anita who just died, and so we don't think any more about her, and you have Gottfried, one of the three Nazis, who just died, so you don't think more about him. But Anita turned out to be a dead ringer for Harriet, thus allowing Harriet to leave the country without you know, and Gottfried also had a son who was even worse than he, so, yeah, that, you know, it's one thing to use that red herring once, but, and that, I mean, using it once is fine, but twice in the exact same, that seemed a little bit, especially because those were the two big things, you know, the big reveals were the murderer's identity, you know, I already forgot his name, but Gottfried's son. And, you know, the fact that Harriet is still alive and how she did manage to get out of the country. And both of them are, you know, done in that way. I like the whole, you know, Bible verse thing with the Although that did perhaps lose some effect once you did realize that, oh, then when, you know, when Gottfried's son took over, he quit the whole, you know, justifying thing and he just went and killed and didn't get caught. I really liked Salander's revenge and taking back control situation with her legal guardian, you know. At first I thought, you know, wow, Sweden just must have some really messed up laws for a 24 year old girl to have to have a legal guardian, but then, you know, you find out about, oh, you know, she had a past with, you know, psychological and violent episodes or something. That's also one thing, you know, Watching this movie, there's not a lot that I feel really needs resolving, but I do want to know more about her past. You know, she is an intriguing character, and from watching the trailer for the second one, it does appear that there will be more of, you know, more, and there will be actual, you know, detail about her past. All we get here in the first one is a flashback and, you know, the mention that, oh, he wasn't a very good father to you, oh, but mom, he was worse to you than he was to me, that's it, you know, and you can just try to draw something from that. The sort of theme of, you know, these authority figures abusing women and, you know, I also do, I, I don't know why this is called the girl with the dragon tattoo, well I know, but I don't understand why they felt the need to change it from the original, which is men who hate women. That's what it's called in Swedish and in Danish. And I think that really fits far more, that really, you know, that nails the thematic right there. You know, these are, yeah, men who just hate women and you know, want to destroy them, really, or, you know, use them, abuse them. And, you know, you have these several, you know, you have the, the Nazis doing that, and through that, 
sort of. Harriet was a victim of that. And you have Elizabeth, you know, Miss Salander, also, it would appear from the, you know, as a child, I mean, also, you know, concurrently, you know, with her legal guardian, also a victim of a man who has some authority, abusing that authority to, you know, and yeah, it was it was fantastic to see her get the revenge over that bastard, and you know, it it felt like a very credible portrayal of you know also you know you hear Gottfried's son you know talk about it you know saying you know I just I do what I want you know it's it it's it's a sort of sociopathic kind of thing, you know, he doesn't have any limits, he doesn't have any ethical boundaries, you know, and that's, you know, that's part of something like that. I like the, <laughs> or liked, I found the Hollywoodization of the hacking quite amusing, you know, she just types, find Blomqvist's laptop and connect, you know, because that's how computers work. You just type exactly what you want it to do, but just don't forget the little, I don't remember the, you know, the, the line under the, near the bottom of the letters. I need sleep. Did I mention that? I suppose that is more or less what I wanted to say. I thought Salander was a very credible and very mysterious and intriguing character. I liked how, you know, there's there's clearly some kind of relationship. You know, she has issues with relationships. She had maybe trouble committing, you know. And yeah, that was interesting to, and, you know, a lot like, you know, he asks, what happened to you to make you this way? And I, you know, I like that, you know, again with the revenge, but it's... Let's be honest, it's one of the best things about the movie. It's really one of the best, you know, you have the setup. You have the first meeting between the two. You know, I just got a new legal guardian. Uh, or you just got a new legal guardian and she goes to meet him and, you know, he's awful, you know. And, you know, then she goes back to him, you know, need more money. Uh, she goes back to him, I need money, and, you know, we see what happens she has to do to get money, then she goes back to him another time, and then when she gets back from that one, we find out that this time she came in with a plan. You know, she, it's like, you only do that to her once. You know, you, nobody screws over Miss Salander more than once, you know, and you certainly don't get away with it. That was a really great, and also just the sheer determination of that woman to put herself through that. I mean, yes, she said that she didn't realize that it was going to be more than, you know, oral, but it was still, you know, she went into the lion's den and she did it because she knew that that was the way to you know, take charge of the situation, and, and she did it, you know, there was no hesitation, there was no, that, that was really fantastic, and that, again, makes her an intriguing character, it makes me wonder what exactly happened to her in the past that made her so determined to now take charge, because, again, the determination, she could easily he was at her mercy. She could have killed him. But she didn't. She, you know, 
or done a heck of a lot more to him than she did. So, you know, she must... You know, I'm, I'm thinking there's, in her past, some really horrible situations of authority, you know, men of authority abusing her, abusing their authority, and, you know, she doesn't want to let that happen ever again. But at the same time, she is strong enough to, you know, realize she can't just kill them, because that would make things worse, you know. I suppose that is pretty well everything. Well, I like the, you know, the little the realization of Blomquist when he's, you know, Gottfried's son saved him from Harold, and, you know, they got back out of that house and got into Gottfried's son's home, and then suddenly it's, what were you doing at Harold's place, you know, because he doesn't think about that in the exact situation, because he thinks that Harold is the killer, and he just wants to get out of there alive, you know. Maybe it should also be noted that Gottfried's son knew exactly how to handle that rifle, you know. He, it didn't take him, a, you know, any time to figure out how to get the, you know, the shells out of that thing without firing it, you know, so also a little hint that he was the gunman, you know, up on the grass, you know. And the Yeah, I suppose that pretty well covers it, so yeah. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.